So this video is another brain dump, and this is the second of four key urological topics which are clinically relevant that I have found in my 10-week rotation at the Ballarat Base Hospital. This video is designed to be an educational video, mainly for myself. However, I hope that others may find it useful. And today we're going to be talking about bladder cancer. So bladder cancer is a, um, is a t common type of cancer in the uro urological context and will often be present on you know one particular side of the bladder. And the way that these guys um, present is with can either be um, with hematuria. Painless hearing hematuria is the most common um, presentation. And uh, you can also ask about risk factors once you hear about this painless hematuria. So smoking is by far the most common cause or contributing factor. There are also other causes of bladder cancer or urothelial cancer as well. And these are certain types of dyes uh, and paints. Also, if you are persistently dehydrated, the, the theory is that the concentrated urine sits in, uh, sits in your um, bladder for longer, uh, or the concentrated urine has a higher concentration of toxins and it sits in your bladder, which predisposes you to developing bladder cancer. Another way that it can present is an incidental finding. So I remember this um, other young gentleman who was being investigated for urinary incontinence and on ultrasound scan um, we, there was like a bit of a bladder mass which was picked up on, on the scan and then this was investigated um, subsequently. One thing I wanted to clarify on top of this was the difference between urothelial carcinoma as well as a TCC or transitional cell carcinoma, and these things are exactly the same. I think you, I think um, urothelial carcinoma is the new way of um, saying transitional cell carcinoma. The urothelial and transitional cell are more or less synonyms. So let's say if you have um, a, this young patient and they've presented with hematuria, or and you know what next? So. The basic surgical principles seem to be fairly simple in my eyes. If you have bleeding, you want to find out where it is. And you want to see if you can find out where it's coming from. So the best way to do that is with a flexible cystoscopy. So it's, in my eyes, it's the equivalent of a colonoscopy. Um, so if you have a elderly patient who is bleeding from the bowel, then you have a look inside with a colonoscopy. If you that same gentleman has bleeding from the bowel, you have a look with a flexible cystoscopy. So this allows you to visualize the lower tracts particularly well. Lower tracts, so you're allowed to, you can look at the, all the way along the urethra, you can look along the bladder and even the ureteric orifices which the ureters feed out into. You can have a basic view there. And if there are any obvious bladder tumors there, then you can take a biopsy and send it off for, for histology. Now. The next thing that I've got here is a CT IVP or a computed tomography intravenous pyelogram. And this is where you inject dye into the veins. This dye is concentrated by the kidneys, excreted out through the kidneys into the renal pelvis, ureters, and out into the bladder. And what this allows you to visualize is the upper tracts. So you can particularly have a look at the renal pelvis um, and the ureters and see if they are what we call any filling defects. And the logic behind here is that if you have a, a filling defect or if you have a tumour growing in the renal pelvis for example, then when you have the collection of contrast from the CTIBP, that particular tumour will not be radio opaque. That will be that will have the same density as tissue, and it can be a, 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 an approximate. It can be a very rough guidance to see if there is any um, tumor which is causing the bleeding from the upper half of the renal tract. Okay, so say you've um, found um, you know this particular a bladder tumor on the left lateral wall of the bladder. What do you do then? Now. Um, Usually you do what is called a resection, or a TURBT. 
and this is a transurethral trans resection of bladder tumor. You just feed a little, um, you feed a feed a rigid cystoscope into the bladder, and then you diathermy this out. Essentially, you laser that out. You take that off and send it for histology. Once it comes, once a histology comes back, then you it will either be in the new grading system, either be low grade. Or high grade, and high grade can be divided up into muscle non-invasive or muscle invasive. And this generally determines what kind of management you go for. So, low grade disease, as a very broad category, a very broad rule, what you do is you give mitomycin. Mitomycin is a chemical which uh, is a cytotoxic toxic agent and destroys or aims to destroy the low-grade urothelial carcinoma. High-grade disease, on the other hand, this is a pathological classification system. High-grade muscle non-invasive disease can be treated with BCG. So BCG stands for Bacille Calmet Guerin and is you know, the vaccine or the inactivated um, vaccine for um, tuberculosis. Um, so after you've, you can give BCG both in two different ways. You can give it, you know, when you first have the diagnosis of muscle non-invasive disease, you do six weeks of induction BCG. And induction BCG is just where you, you put in higher concentrations for a longer period of time so that you can get rid of the burden of disease. So you know, that's induction. And then after you've done that, then... You do, you do repeat flexible cystoscopies, and if indicated, you can do three weeks of maintenance BCG. So shorter durations, and I'm assuming less concentrated, but just to keep the disease burden down and to a minimum. The final thing, which is a big operation, a big operative management, is if you have muscle invasive and high-grade disease. And in this case, there's a high risk of the transitional cell carcinoma or the bladder cancer um, metastasizing and causing extensive damage and death to the, to the patient. And what you can do in this case is you can do cystectomy either with ileal conduit formation or with a neobladder. Cystectomy means you take out the bladder, you take out the whole thing, but the patient still needs a vessel to store the urine in. And you can use an ileal conduit where you take off, you take a portion of the ileal, tie off both ends, and um, use that as a bladder, as a new bladder to store the urine in. Um, obviously, for the first few weeks after you've put in the ileal conduit, you, the anastomoses may not be good or may not be fully healed, so that's why you put in a indwelling catheter for, I think it's like, you know, up to two weeks in time, just so you can get the anastomoses well. You can get the anastomoses to heal well. Um, but that, that one is the biggest operation. I only saw a couple of these at the very start of my rotation and saw none since then. So that, in a nutshell, is bladder cancer.